indie film lovers, thank you for tuning in to Indie Cinema New York on Brick TV. I'm your host, Kwebe, Bushwick Film Festival founder and indie film enthusiast. Tonight, the 16th annual Tribeca Film Festival opens at Radio City Music Hall. As always, the festival promises an incredible lineup of panels, events, and all-around amazing films through April 30th. Here's the trailer for Tribeca 2017. Simmer, simmer down Somebody Take it on the chain and leave The party It's hard All I know Start writing Get a sweat That was the trailer to Tribeca 2017. Not to be missed is the weekend's premiere of Aardvark, starring Jenny Slate, Zachary Kento, John Hamm. Aardvark was produced by Neil Dodson and directed by award-winning director Brian Schoff. And I'm very excited to have him with us on the show today. Brian, thank you so much oh, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Brian, you have a great big week this week. Yes. Premiering at Tribeca. It's your first feature yes. film. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the story of Aardvark? Yeah, um, uh, Aardvark starts with uh, a therapist played by Jenny Slate meeting a patient for the first time. The patient's played by Zachary Quinto. Mm -hmm. And um, he has come to her with some unresolved issues that he's maybe a little reluctant to discuss, but they are clearly related to his uh, relationship with his brother, who he has not seen in many, many years. And he's heard a rumor that his brother has come back to town, but he hasn't yet set eyes on him himself. Um, uh, as, as the story progresses, um, said brother, uh -huh. played by John Hamm, uh, shows up on Emily's doorstep, quite literally, mm -hmm. and uh, things get pretty complicated between the three of them. Um, uh, but ultimately, Very yes, <laughs> quite. But ultimately, I think it's about you know about this this estrangement coming to an end one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and and I think at times it seems as if uh, Emily is going to uh, prevent that from happening, and then at times it seems like she's going to facilitate it. I think she's very much you know uh, caught in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, but that's I, I you know I I hope that that's kind of the trajectory. That we're on there. It's certainly what we, what we planned. Well, I was lucky enough to see the film. Thank you for the screener. Oh. Um, I want to. I see that the film deals with uh, complicated mental illness. Mm -hmm. um, what is your connection to mental health, and what made you decide to to create a film or direct a film that brought up this, you know, somewhat taboo issue? Um, well, I think it's a it's a hugely important issue. Um, Societally, um, uh, and and one that that I think I don't know. I feel like uh, of late, a lot of people, particularly very high-profile people, have have felt like they can come out and talk about issues, even as seemingly simple as depression, mm -hmm. and and you know, sort of say this is in fact what's really happening. Yeah, and and in fact, more complicated than it seems, and and you know, some of that taboo is being lifted. Um, in my own family. Uh, there are, I, I have, there are people who've been diagnosed with schizophrenia in my own family, although I will say um, not people, I've never been in the position um, of being like a primary caregiver mm -hmm. or, or, you know, the, these are, you know, relatives who I have relationships with, but it's not like I've been like on the, the front lines yeah. there, um, which is, I think, very much what the story deals with. It deals with, I think, um, how uh, people 
who find themselves diagnosed with mental illness can kind of become, a, uh, I don't want to say a burden, but, yeah. but, but that puts such an incredible strain on families. Those people find themselves increasingly isolated. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think, you know, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to tackle this issue completely, mm -hmm. but that um, uh, there were certain things that I think I felt like we could we could the spotlight. Yeah, we could shine yeah. a light on it. I think the isolation is is a major uh, issue. You know, th this feeling I think that people have of of being kind of pushed off and, yeah. and discarded somewhat. And I think that was something that we really want to deal with. But like I say, like I, you know, um, uh, that's not something that I've dealt with firsthand. But it is, um, you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, I can definitely understand. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was in college, I went through. Uh, a, a depression and mm -hmm. it took a lot of people coming together to help me get out of it um, so yeah so I really appreciated you bringing that to, to yeah. the screen and showing how it strains like people's lives yeah, yeah well th thank you I mean and, and, I, and I think that there was also a big choice you know not to um, try to depict it in a necessarily like uh, gritty verite way but you know to maybe yeah. to maybe allow allow how we're talking about mental illness and treating it here as in a little more poetic manner because there is there is a um a component of imagination mm -hmm. and of uh you know personality and and it's something that you know it, it's something that does define people but it doesn't always have to define them in strictly negative terms i agree um and i think that it's you know i think that was another thing that we wanted to kind of touch on here so let's get to your cast Yes. So you have Jenny Slate from Obvious Child, John Hamm from Mad Men, Zachary Quinto, Star Trek, Del Souls, Orange is the New Black. I mean, I could just keep going. Yes. Like how, <laughs> how as your first feature film, how were you able to put together such an incredible, I mean, I even mentioned the producer, Neil Dotson. Yeah. Like, how did you uh, do that? <laughs> well, on the, I mean, I will say on the one hand, there was mm -hmm. just some some good old luck, mm -hmm. you know, just, um, uh, but but it started, it really started with Zach. Because uh -huh. he, um, so, so full disclosure, Zach and Neil and I went to college together. Okay. Um, uh, which is now a very long time ago. <laughs> and um, uh, I tried for about a year, or om probably almost two years, to make the film using, I mean, I don't know, sort of using every trick I had short of just going to famous people I had gone to college <laughs> with and being like, please make this movie. Um, and, and the funny thing is I actually sent the, Zach the script through his agent uh -huh. and then like emailed him right afterwards. It was like, you're going to get a script from your agent. Like, that's me sending you this script. Uh -huh. But like, I didn't want to just sort of be like, hey, look what I did, you yeah. know? Um, but amazingly, you know, Zach read the script. He took it very, very seriously. Uh -huh. He read the script, and then, you know, we met, and he said, I, not only do I want to be in the movie, I want to produce it. And then that wow. brought Neil in. I mean, uh -huh. Neil and I are very, very old friends, but that, you know, Neil and Zach produced films together. So that brought Neil in. Uh -huh. uh, and then they brought in our other producer, Susan Lieber, who they had worked with on, um, on Margin Call. Um, and uh, and I will say that Zach was, was really, like, a just such a... I mean, I don't know, a cheerleader doesn't sound like like enough, but he he really helped us go out and recruit uh -huh. um, uh, Jenny and John, um, uh, and and I would say that Jenny probably you know Jenny probably played a role also in bringing John in because I think they all you know sort of I mean they had enough of a relationship that yeah. it was a similar situation that you know we weren't just cold calling his his agent his manager that they were also able to you know sort of drop a line and say hey actually read this we're okay. we're making it you know that's really cool yeah. um we're really we have about two minutes yeah, sorry, and sorry. i just want to quickly I, w I read entertainment weekly and it says art of rock is number one on the films to watch um uh at tribeca and your film is sold out you know tribeca even had to put another screening yes. so wh what do you what does it feel like what it, are you gonna do? <laughs> it's it's very very well. You know we're number one on a lot of lists because yeah. of the the we have two A's in our title. So you know I mean I presume some of it's that, but I think that um, uh, it's it's very very exciting, mm -hmm. and I am I'm very excited to see. I've uh, it's been a very long time since we had a test screening, and even when we had test screenings, they were very small audiences. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it in a theater with 500 people. Wow. Which is what's going to happen Friday night. So I'm just excited for that, you oh know, and, and, and that, I'm excited to experience that. 
and after that, then, you know, I mean, we'll just all hope for the best. <laughs> well, we wish you the best here at Brick TV and ICNY. Um, I know it took you four years or four to five years to... <laughs> Something like that. Since you yeah. had that interesting conversation at the coffee shop yes. with Allison. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, but, yeah, um, that's it for this episode. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thanks again for joining us, and special thanks to our guest, Brian. Um, Aardvark was produced with Great Point Media, mm -hmm. and the film will screen five times at this year's Tribeca Film Festival, starting this Friday at the SVA Theater, which is sold out. So you can't get a ticket, but you can get a ticket for Sunday. Um, you can find tickets at Aardvark and many other great films at TribecaFilm.com. ICNY is produced by the Bushwick Film Festival. You can visit us at IndieCinemaNY.com.